Sujiputram Atra Surupam Rupam Tasyakraja Muri Puri Mathurim of Sri Guru and the Goranga. We have this very rare and precious opportunity to be together and sink deeply into the teachings of our Guru Varga, especially our subject this week is the Sri Bhajan Rahasya 
Asila Bhaktano Thakur. Many years before, my Gurudev, Asila Bhaktivedanta Narayana Goswami Maharaj, he was giving class on this text in Braja for a long time, explaining each verse. And he said that during this time he was experiencing unlimited bliss. Later, one of my god sisters, Savita Didi, she took the recordings and then she transcribed and then made a manuscript and then presented it to Srila Gurudev and then he went uh, preaching. So he took a break from the preaching to write in one very beautiful island in the Philippines, Cebu. So uh, only a few devotees were there with him while he was on the retreat. By his cause's mercy, I was one of them. Every morning he would walk on the beach chanting Japa. And it reminded him of Jagannath Puri. And every day he was going through the manuscript and editing, adding things, whatever, making the book, this book. This book. Ah. Everyone try to have the copy of this. Great treasure. So, he was absorbed in this. One morning, he came back from his morning walk. And I can see, looking in his eyes, he was not even here in this world. Tears in his eyes and relishing. He said to me, Always be with Sila Raghunath Das Goswami. In Puri. Remembering how he was staying with Swarup Damodar Goswami and hearing from him daily, fresh delivery every morning of the latest Qatar, of what went on in the Gambira, Mahapu's pastimes from that previous night. Raghunath Daskaswami was staying in Satasan. And Satasan Tila. And in the night time, Saurabh Damada would be in the Gambira with Roy Ramananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then, when they would return in the morning, so Raghunath Daska Swami was like a calf. You know when it's milking time, the coward boy puts a rope around the calf's neck and a post in the ground, close to the mother. The calf is very eager to get the milk. So just like a calf is eager to get the milk, Raghunath Daska Swami is waiting at the end of the night. When will Sorup Damadaga Swami come back from the Gambira? and share with me uh, what he has uh, witnessed and the nectar he has the, been singing and causing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to relish and how Mahaprabhu has opened his heart and his realizations to him. Uh, and Swarup Damadaka Swami would come back. Raghunath Daka Swami would give Pranam, Oh Prabhu, please tell me. And then Swarup Damadaka would explain to him what happened. And both of them, they would become so absorbed in speaking and hearing that they forgot about time. Hmm? By the time they realized it was almost noon, they did not do Gayatri or take a bath or anything. Because <laughs> for them there was no time. Don't follow that. <laughs> Try to follow Vaidhi Bhakti strictly. When you are beyond time, then that's another thing. Uh, so, 
Gurudev said, you should be always like that, absorbed in hearing, chanting and remembering the pastimes of Mahaprabhu and his associates. Then he said to me, you know, what is the difference between a Hamsa and a Paramahamsa? Hamsa is that person, he is, uh, if he is in the renounced order of life, then he will have to wear Uttari and carry Danda. But when he becomes Paramahamsa, then there is no need of any external symptoms or symbols. It's beyond all regulations. Nirgranta. Paramahamsa Nirgranta. Did you see Atmarama classes? No? So, last week. So, his Nigranta, he is, has no knot of any ego and he has no uh, need to follow any Grantas, rules and regulations of scripture. Yeah. So, uh, if the person is a Hamsa, then a swan means who can from a mixture of milk and water, separate the milk from the water. That means that he can always discriminate between what is the self and what is not the self. Between what is maya, illusion, asat, and what is sat, eternal reality, truth, vastava vastu, vedyam vastava matur vastu shivadam tapatran mulanam. He knows the substance of reality. So that is the Hamsa. He can separate milk from water. And the Paramahamsa, for him, there is only milk. <laughs> Everywhere, milk, milk and milk. There is no Maya at all. There is nothing to discriminate between this one and that one. For him, everyone is a pure devotee. Except for himself. And he is in great bliss always, realizing Krishna at every moment. So Paramahamsa is like that. Then Gurudev said, I am uh, editing my, my own classes. And he said, and when I read, I become amazed. I cannot believe that I spoke this. <laughs> in his humility, uh, good is thinking, oh, I am, who am I? I am nothing. Uh, and reading his own classes, who has spoken this? <laughs> he, he said, I was surprised. <laughs> hmm? Then he said, then I must, uh, I am sure that when I was speaking this, that Srila Bhakti Nautako must have been inspiring me, otherwise it would not be possible. Then he said that, as I am writing this, I am realizing how Srila Bhakti Thakur, in his Swarup, Nitya Swarup, as Kamala Manji, is serving Radha and Krishna in the Nikunjas of Prattva. So, you should know that the heart of Srila Gurudev is here in these commentaries and the heart of Srila Bhakti Thakur is expressed here. Srila Bhakti Thakur is Saptam Goswami, the seventh Goswami. The missions that were accomplished by the six Goswamis, six in Vrindavan, to discover the lost deities, to discover the lost holy places, to write Bhakti Grantas and establish what is proper behavior for Vaishnavas. Uh, those missions that were done by six Goswamis in Vrindavan, one Goswami, Sila Bhakti Nautakur, has done them all in Navadvita. So, Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Sachidananda Namine Gaur Shakti Surupaya Rupanu Gavarayate Before we begin this Katha, we 
we are offering our pranam thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti no Thakur Gaura Shakti Swarup who is specifically empowered by Gaura Shakti the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to reveal Gaura Nam, Gaura Dham and Gaura Kam the name of Gaura, the Dham of Gaura and the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this age, contemporary age. Before Srila Bhaktanot Thakur, it was as if the Ganges of Shuddha Bhakti that was brought to this world by Mahapu was blocked. That stopped. Just like Bhagirat Maharaj. Uh, when the uh, Ganges was flowing in heaven but it did not come to earth. But Bhagirat Maharaj he arranged for the flow of the Ganges to flow through this world. So in the same way, the flow of Shuddha Bhakti had almost stopped. And then Srila Bhakti Nautakur, he was the Bhagarat, Bhagarat Maharaj of the Ganges of pure Bhakti. He made it flow again. So we are in Vinod Dhara. In the current of the conception of Srila Bhakti no Thakur. His son, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, was like the contractor. Srila Bhakti no Thakur has drawn up the plans like an architect, made the blueprint, how the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will spread all over the world. But then the architect has to give the the plan to the construction company and then they manifest it. So Srila Bhakti, no, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur took the plan of Srila Bhakti no Thakur and began to manifest it everywhere. And that is why we are sitting here today with Tilak and singing the holy names. Uh, only by their mercy never, never forget this. And give your life completely in the service of our Acharyas, we can never repay them. Sila Bhaktisthan Swathakur first published this Bhajan Rahasya and he wrote a, an introduction which is very important. So we want to we want to uh, hear his deep thoughts that he understood were essential for us to know before we enter into Bhajan Rasa. So first of all, he mentions that this, he said, Papa Bhaktisthan Sutakur is speaking. He said, this destitute person, worthless person, had the opportunity to observe Srila Bhakti no Thakur when he was doing bhajan. Right? Because he was his son. So he used to see his father. Right? He had a little room in the Hariya Vinaya in Godrumbi. Right? And he used to go and say, chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Then he would stop and begin to utter some verses. Agadamana Yashoda Nanda no Nanda Suno Kamalana Yamana Gopi Chandra Bandrava Nendra Pranata Karuni Krishna Avitane Kasurupe Tui Mama Rati Vadatam Namadeya and again chat Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 and again after some time stop and sing a verse and again chat so the young Silla Bhakti Siddhanta Sazutakur, he saw how his father was doing bhajan. And those very verses that he used to remember, uh, uh, he compiled and put in this book, this Granta Bhajan Rahasya. It is actually the supplement to Harinam Chintamani. In Harinam Chintamani, Srila Bhakti no Thakur has given all the overview of the theology of the Holy Name. What is Nama Parad, Nama Bas, Shuddha Nam, 
various types of aparad, various types of namabhas and so on. These things. So he's explained nam bhajan in a general way. But here in bhajan rahasya, he is explaining in a specific way how he himself did bhajan and what he was relishing. He's given a glimpse. Of course, it's unlimited. But he's giving a glimpse in this uh, bhajan rahasya. Now, bhajan rahasya, there are two words here, bhajan and rahasya. So it's important to know what they mean. Bhajan comes from bhaj datu in Sanskrit, to serve. Bhaj datu sevaya. So, it means to serve. And there are so many angas of service. Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasayanam, Archanam, Vananam, Dasam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. Or you can analyze in 64 types of, of uh, bhakti. But this bhajan, which is described here, is it is about Sankirtan, which is a Purna Bhajan Anga. Uh, Purna Bhajan. It is not an Anga, a part of Bhajan. It is actually the Purna Bhajan Anga. It is the totality of all Bhajan is there. Nava Veda Bhakti Purna Nama Purna Nama Hoite Hoi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said. In the chanting of the holy name, all of the other practices, all the other angles of bhakti are included in that. So it is Purna. Purna. Now, Sila Bhakti Thakur is explaining here that many people use the word bhajan to refer to archan. This is important. Don't think that uh, Archan is only worshipping the deities. But Archan is an anger of bhajan, which, an anger of bhakti, which has many parts. Sila Rupa Goswami part explains in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, of the 64 angers of bhakti, some of them are, have one practice. For example, following the deity on a procession is one anger of bhakti. So the deity is going and you follow behind it. But then there are other angers of bhakti which are complex of many different things. So in archan, including in archan is putting on tilak, cooking, cleaning the temple, decorating the deity, many things. And in the junior stage, when you are doing uh, kirtan, you are singing to the deities. This is part of archan. And when you are doing smaran, it's not really smaran. It is part of archan because in the archan, it will say, mm. "Now uh, we should remember Vrindavan." To Vrindavanam Jayat Paramananda Varanam Kalindi Jalakalala Sangi Maruta Sevitam. Now, after worshipping Guru and Goranga, now you should meditate on Vrindavan. But are you doing meditation really? Are you in the state of Gyan? Or are you just saying this and thinking as you do the Archa? So even the Smaran that we are doing in the beginning is not really Smaran, but it's part of our Archa practice. So, the difference between Archan and Bhajan is this. Srila Bhaktisthan Swatakur explains that Archan means we are serving Krishna, the deity. But we have a mood of awe and reverence, Aishwarya. In other words, we know this is Krishna and Krishna is Bhagavan. He has spoken the Bhagavad Gita. Aham Sarvasa Prabhavo. 
Why? Because Madhya Shoda has made this ghee and put it aside and this is being kept to be given to the Brahmas, for, Brahmanas for the Yajna. But Krishna cannot wait for the Yajna, for the Mantra and Tantra, anything, and he goes and takes the water. Gopalangana kada leshu viharangvi pratre lajase Bruce go brisha hunkata sutitam monam vidase satam Dasyam go kula punksha leshu kuru she swam yam nadam patmasu Gyatam Krishna tavangri pankata yugam Premai kalabyam muhu Bilvamangu Thakur He said that Gopalangana kamanesmiram vi pratare lajase when the Brahmanas are performing fire sacrifices and they're praying for the Supreme Lord to appear in the fire. But Krishna never goes there. He's shy to go there. But what is he doing? Gopalangana Kahadameshwar. He's rolling in the mud in the courtyards of the Prajabhasis. <laughs> Very, with no hesitation, no inhibition, no shyness at all. He's going to the neighbor's house and rolling in cow dung there and playing. And he's very happy. Hmm? So many rishis in the forest are reciting the Vedas. Om Sahasasi Shapurusa Sasraksas Sahasapati Sahumin Vishwato Brittva Ajatista Dasangulam <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> no reply. <laughs> Brahma and all the demigods went to the shore of the ocean of milk and prayed the Purusa Sukta. <laughs> Crickets. Nothing. No reply at all. It's very difficult. Only Brahmaji heard the message in his heart. Uh -huh. So the Rishis, they're calling Krishna with thousands and hundreds of Vedic prayers. No reply. But in Braja, Bruce go Brishonkrata in the forest, one cow has wandered off. And she called oh, I'm coming, I'm coming and Krishna's running there to get that cow and bring the cow back. Uh -huh. Why? Gatam Krishna Tavangri Pankata Yugam Premai Kalabyam. I know that Krishna, your lotus feet are only attained by praying, by love. Dasam Gokul Rishishu Pungstali Somyam Nadampa Atmasu And yogis are meditating on Supreme Lord in their heart. And they want to have darshan of the Supreme Lord in their heart and become das, the servants of the Supreme Lord. That very Krishna, who will not accept the position of Swami to his das, the yogis who want to be his das, himself becomes das. To whom? The yogis are dampatmasu, that means they have perfect control over their senses and mind. Mind is in. Samadhi, completely restrained mind, but he doesn't want to become their master, but he becomes the servant, Dasyam Gokil Kula Pumskalisu, he becomes the servant of the Pumskali, that means gopis whose minds are completely restless and out of control, they cannot control their mind, their senses. Huh? They're in a state of complete distraction. All the time thinking of Krishna, they become distracted. They don't know how to do the housework. Even. So, Krishna is only controlled by love. So, Sanatana Goswami saw. How, how is she serving? By love. But when the person is still conditioned, 
He is doing archa. He knows Krishna is God. And his service is coming through, expressed through maryada, vidhi, nished, rules and regulations. Then the next aspect of archa is that the articles which are being offered are jagatik vastu. Jagatik vastu. That means the substances of this world are being offered. Incense, deep, dup, the uh, conch, water, vasta, cloth, agya, padya, maduparka, naivedya, all various substances of this world, they offer to Krishna, they become transcendental. Huh? But in bhajan, the devotee is serving with bhav. So his bhav, what he's realizing, ingredients in his heart, he's serving with that. And another aspect of archan is that the person who's doing this service to the deity has uh, dayatma buddhi, dayatma abhiman, identification with this body. You have to give it up. Before you go in the temple room, actually you cannot give pranam on the altar of the deities. Pranam is done outside the deities room. Hmm? Come, ring the bell, hmm? you give pranam and then you go in the deities. The meaning is this, when you give pranam before going in, means that you are giving up identification with the body and mind and only your soul is going in. So you have to do Bhutshuti first. Na ambi pro na cha na rapati na pivaisha na sutro na ambani na chakripiti no vanasto yativa kintu padyan nikla paramanand purnamritate gopi bata parakamaleo das das anudasaha I am not a Brahmin, Kattriya, Vaisha, Shudra. I am not a Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Osanyas. I am only the servant of the servant of Krishna who is the Pran of the gopis of Vrindavan. So giving up that and taking on the Sambandagya, the relationship given by Gurudev at the time of Diksha. Yeah? One, by Atma you should go and, and, then, and then serve. But still, uh, in the lower stage we are doing it mechanically. Bhuti hmm? Purvaka, by using our intelligence and now I am forgetting about my body. But if you accidentally touch something hot, ow, you will immediately remember. Uh, so in the stage of Archan, still the bodily identification is, is there. By, as a rule, you have to buddhi purvak, knowingly, conscientiously, uh, disconnect and be detached from that. But the reason you have to go through that process of buddhi is because it's there. So, these are the aspects of Archan. Now, what is Bhajan? In Bhajan, there is no bodily identification at all. You don't think that it's impossible. All of our great gurus and acharyas are beyond this material world, though they appear to be physically present. And though in the sadhak form, the devotee is aware, he can give a class on Bhagavad Gita and say that Krishna is God. But the hot rays of Aishwarya Gyan cool down and they are not so effective anymore and the devotee thinks in terms of his natural sambandha relationship in Vrindavan and when they chant the holy names then they totally totally forget that Krishna is God now he is only Yashoda Nanda 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 coward boy in Vrindavan very vulnerable very needy He's not Atmara Vatpaka Attaka, self-satisfied. 
Nanda Maharaj thinks of my son, he, after a thousand years he will not be at my <laughs> So in bhajan there is a natural relationship, there is complete forgetfulness of the body and the devotee in a very beautiful transcendental spiritual form is directly serving Sri si, si Raga Krishna. So this text bhajan rahasya is how to progress from A to B, from A where we are now in the darkness of ignorance, of the yatma, abhiman, identification with the body, down in the modes, with the frogs and the toads, <laughs> where we are affected by worldly desires, where we are affected by lust, anger, greed, pride, envy, all of these things. How to go from there? to where the soul is completely free. Agrahai Mukti Tabe Sarva Banda Nash Tabe Sayeti Pare Sri Krishna Das First, all the bonds of material existence, all the bondage of material existence should be Nash destroyed. Then, you become Krishna Das. Servant of Krishna. So Bhajana Hasa is how to go from the worldly consciousness to that plane of being situated in our Siddha Swarup spiritual identity and serving Radha and Krishna. So now we'll come to the first verse. So this was was it is um, almost the same as the famous verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna Vanam to Shakrishnam, but Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur has just uh, made some modification of the last line uh, and used that as the the Mangala Charnam, the auspicious in invocation to Bhajanasa. So verse first verse. Krishna Varnam Tusha Krishnam Sango Pandas to Parshadam Yagya Sankirtana Praya Bajami Kalipavanam Original verse Yajanti Sumeda Saha But here Bajami Kalipavanam Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said Bajami I worship Kalipavanam That person who purifies Everyone and everything In this age of Kali the age of Kali is very, very degraded. Tamna sandashi to dhatra dustaram nestatistatam kalim sattva ham pumsa karnavadana ivara navam. The sages of Naimi Sharanya said to Sutta Goswami, Oh, we think that we have met you by great fortune to accept you as a the Karnadara, the captain of our ship, Karnadara, to hold our ear and bring us in the right direction. That is Guru is called Karnadara. We are going that way and goes, hey, where are you going? Come here. We have accepted you to be the captain of the ship so that we can cross over this difficult ocean of Kali Yuga which deteriorates all the good qualities of the human being. In this age of Kali, if you are born and you have good qualities, all you have to do is just live a little bit. And the atmosphere of life in Kali Yuga will bring you down, make you become more and more contaminated. But, Bajami Kali Pavanam, Sri Chaitanya Mahapu purifies everything and everyone in this Kali Yuga. Who is he? Krishna Vanam Tisha Krishnam Sango Pangas Taparshadam Yagyai Sankirtana Praya. First part of the verse was spoken in Srimad Bhagavatam by Karavajan Rishi to Nimi Maharaj. Nimi Maharaj 
Ja sen nimi on nimi. So, nimi Maharaj was asking, what is the dharma, the process for each yuga, and who is the incarnation of the Lord who establishes that dharma? So when it came to Kali Yuga, now remember, this is millions of years ago, before Kali Yuga, and the Kara, 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 uh, Karabhajan Rishi, one of the Nava Yogendras, nine Yogendras, he is uh, telling about the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's not a prophecy that in the future he will come, because uh, in every day of Lord Brahma he comes. So it's the more like a schedule or timetable than a prophecy. So Karabhajan Rishi said, Krishna, this incarnation, Krishna Varnam, Tusha Krishna. The word Varna means, uh, one meaning is color. So Krishna Varnam, the incarnation is Krishna Shanam color. Tusha Krishna. But Tusha means his radiance, his aura, Tusha. Actually, Twit, Twit means the, the, the radiance. So Twisha means by his radiance, Ah Krishna, he is the opposite of dark. He is golden. So how beautiful. That means, also Varna means category. Hmm? What's your Varna? That means your jati, what caste you are in. So Krishna Varna is, this incarnation is not an angsa or a kala. It's not an expansion of an expansion of an expansion or a part or a shaktivesh. He is Krishna jati. Krishna varna. He's in the category of Krishna. So how many forms are in the category of Krishna Swami Bhagavan? Only Krishna. So Krishna varna means he is Swami Bhagavan. Ate changsa kala mumsa. Krishna is two Bhagavan Swayam. So in Kali Yuga, it's not an avatar, it's not an incarnation. It's Avatari, the source of all incarnations. Krishna himself. So Krishna Varna. That Krishna is Krishna. <laughs> Only Krishna is Krishna. Supremely attractive. Brahmaji prayed. He was crying, giving pranam again and again. He's huge, golden, four heads. He just came down from his one carrier. And he's apologizing. Krishna is standing there. Small boy with soft lotus feet, decorated with peacock feathers, with a bamboo flute. And Brahma is saying, Ah, Gunatmana Stepi, you are Gunatmana. You are the Atma of all Gun. You are the soul of all qualities. Whatever qualities exist, where do they come from? They come from you. That's Krishna. That's why he is attracted. Everyone is attracted to some virtues of some sort, but where do they all come from? <laughs> they come from the source of all virtues. Gunatmana stepi. Gunan vimatum. You are the life and soul of all qualities. And you descend to this world for the benefit of all living beings. Even if someone is they are sukalpai, that means by persons with vast intelligence. Brahma is not thinking of himself. He has four heads, but he is not smart enough. But really persons with vast intelligence, like Anantashesh, with thousands of heads. 
like Sankarshan, Supreme Lord's own expansion, Daya Su Sukalpa. So those persons, even given unlimited time, if they can count how many particles of sand there are in the universe, even if they can count, Mihika means how many snowflakes there are. That's more difficult. Because you, if you're counting the, the grains of sand, one, two, three, four, five, they're still there. But the snowflakes are coming, you're counting them, and while you're counting, some of them are disappearing. So you have to recount again. It's more subtle, it's very difficult to count the snowflakes. Because you have to count them all in one second. Otherwise, some of them will melt and some more ones will come. So, it's very difficult. So then Brahmaji said, Then he said, more difficult than that. Even if someone could count the photons coming from the sun. Right? Every moment, millions and millions of photons are coming from the sun. But even if some great personality could do it, like Ananda Shay, she could do it. Brahmaji said, but still, he cannot count your qualities, Krishna. Krishna's virtues, uncountable. So, Hitavati Nasaka Ishiresha means you come with all your wonderful qualities to this world to benefit everyone. The implication is this, how many jivas are there? How many souls are there? Hmm? Also unlimited. And see, Krishna has one special quality to attract each soul. So when Krishna comes to this world, there's unlimited souls here. And with one of his qualities, he catches this one. And with another quality, he catches you. Another quality, he catches you. Another quality, Krishna will catch you. <laughs> Krishna is so amazing. And he'll never come to the end of his qualities. So that very Krishna, Krishna Varnam, Tushar Krishna. But when you look at him, he's not Sham. He's Gaur, Golden. Anta Krishna Bhai Gaur. Why? Krishna. Even though he has unlimited qualities, when he is with Radharani, he has more qualities. More than unlimited. When, Radi when Radhika is with Krishna, Krishna has so many qualities, even he doesn't know that he has. Even he cannot understand. <laughs> so Krishna is like a Ujjwala Nilamani, shining blue sapphire. And Radhika is Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi like a molten gold. Yeah. And now, this blazing blue sapphire of Krishna, when Radha Krishna meets its earth, Gayanta Stantarita Ivata Mega Chakra Virejuhu, like a flash of lightning on a fresh rain cloud. So beautiful. And now this Krishna and Radhika have become one in the form of Gorsunda. He's still Krishna inside, but Radhika's complexion of Mahabharv is shining on the outside. So, Krishna Vanam Tusha Krishna Sango Pangasta Parshadam. My Gurudev said, Mahaprabhu is indescribably beautiful. He said, Krishna's face, but with Radhika's expressions. <laughs> Krishna Vana <laughs> Tusha Krishna Sangu Pangasta Parshana and when he comes he comes with his dham and his associates so here Saanga means his limbs who was so close to him like his limbs Anga here means Nityananda Prabhu and Advaita Acharya Upanga means devotees like Sri Thakur and Parshad means Confidential associates. Starting with Gadara Pandit. He's at the top of the list. 
Sometimes people get confused. They say, oh, in Chaitanya Charamita, it says Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has three and a half intimate associates. Sarup Damodar, Goswami, Ramananda Rai, Shiki Mahiti, and Shiki Mahiti's sister, Madhavi. She's the half. So three and a half intimate associates. Say, but what about Gadada Pandit? Gadada Pandit is not an associate, really. Gadada Pandit is Mahaprabhu's heart. Radhika is Krishna's Atma. That's why Krishna is the Atma Ram. Takes pleasure in his Atma, that is Radhika. Without Radhika, he has no happiness at all. So, that very Radhika has come as Gadada Pandit. And here, Gadada Pandit is the head of the Parshat, category of Parshat. That means Swarup Damada, Roy Ramananda, Rupa Goswami, Ausik Goswami, our Acharyas, our Guru Prabhupada. So, he appears with them. Yagyai Sankirtana Praye. And he is worshipped mainly by Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names. Praye here means mainly, means that the Yuga Dharma for the previous age, Dharpa Yuga, was Archan, the worship of the deity. And now Kali Yuga has begun. There's a little remnant of Archan left over in this Kali Yuga. So we don't, it's not completely Sankirtan. We, we do Sankirtan mainly, but along with that, it is supplemented by the practice of Archan as well. So prayer mainly. Bajani Kali Bhavanam. I serve that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Bhaktanota is quoting this verse to begin Bhajan Rahasya to establish some very important truths. First of all, Mahaprabhu, his identity is very confidential. And now, by after his appearance, through his associates, his identity is being revealed to the world. Last week we celebrated Lord Nishingadev's appearance day and Hirani Kashipu's disappearance day. <laughs> Same day. <laughs> so Prahlad Maharaj, when he prayed to Lord Nishingadev, he said, Channa Kalo Yadababas Triyugam Chasattva. He said, Oh my Lord Nishingadev, you appear in many forms. I, I, among the devas, among the rishis, among the animals, among the fish, in so many forms. But your name is Triyuga, because in Kali Yuga you appear in a hidden way. Channa Kalau. In Kali Yuga you appear in a hidden way. So, even when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in this world, many persons could not recognize him. Sarvabhom Bhattacharya. Who is he? Incarnation of Brihaspati, the guru of all the demigods. He saw Mahaprabhu, but he could not recognize him. So if the guru of all the demigods, Brihaspati, cannot recognize him, then how will the common people recognize him? Hmm? Only by his mercy. Gopinathacharya, the brother-in-law of Sarvabhom Bhattacharya, he said to uh, Sarvabhom Bhattacharya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Supreme Lord Krishna Himself. Sarvam Bhattacharya said, Look, everyone knows the Supreme Lord is called Tri Yuga. He only comes in three Yugas. There's no incarnation in Kali Yuga. <laughs> then he said, Oh, uh, that is because there is no Leela avatar, but there's Yuga avatar. Otherwise, what does Yuga avatar mean? So there must be Yuga avatar. And the little avatar will be included in the Yuga avatar. So, uh, he was trying to persuade, but Sarvabhambhadacharya would not accept. So, Gopanathacharya said, Athapite deva padambhujam dvaya prashad leshanu grihita evi janati tattvam bhagavan mahim no na chane ekopi chiran vichindvan 
Even if someone studies the Vedas for thousands of years, they cannot know the Supreme Personality of Godhead unless they receive a slight trace of His mercy. Sarvabhom Bhattacharya, he said, well, wait, now you're becoming a little, a yeah, little aggressive. You are saying that you have received the Lord's mercy and I have not received the Lord's mercy. Is that what you're saying? But later, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sarvabhom Bhattacharya, he realized and Mahaprabhu showed him his form. As Sadbuj, Sadbuj Goranga, two arms, Krishna, two arms, Ram and his two own two arms. So, very difficult to know Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without mercy. On the other hand, Ramananda Rai, when he was sitting with Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu was asking him questions, after some time, Ramananda Rai said, Paile daki dekinu toma. Sanyasi Swaroop, Ebiyama Toma Deki Shama Goparoop. He said, Before I was looking at you, and you appear to be a Sanyasi, but now I am looking at you, and you appear to have a, a dark sham complexion, like a coward, and appear like a coward boy, and just near to you there is one shining golden doll. Kanchana Panchalika shining golden doll and her effulgence is covering you and your eyes are rolling with various intoxicated with various ecstasies uh, so Ramananda Rai he saw Mahaprabhu was trying to hide himself but Mahaprabhu saw so apna lukai te krishna nani yatna kai Tatapi tarara bhakti jani tare. It is said that Krishna tries to hide himself by various means, but his devotee always finds him. Krishna cannot hide from his devotee because the power of their love, by the power of their love, they can find him. So, Sila Bhakti Nottako in this first verse is explaining. Although many persons, they may not understand, but you should know that the Supreme Lord incarnates in this Kali Yuga to purify everyone, Kali Pavanam, and that is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Yagyai Sankirtana Payer, and He is to be worshipped through Sankirtan, and our whole life is for that only. The only thing which is true which is real, which is not imagination, not like a dream, that will not disappear like smoke uh, and leave you with nothing, is the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is all. Understand this. First verse of Bhajan Raja, just now. The only reality it's the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, nothing else. And those lotus feet are worshipped. How? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. One must, if one wants to be in reality and not in illusion, dedicate one's life fully to Harinam Sankirtan, serving Mahaprabhu, worshipping Him through the holy names and according to one's capacity, also engaging others. Now, we're coming to the second verse. This is from the Stavavali, uh, the collection of prayers of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. And it's the fifth verse of Sachi Sun Vastakam, the eight prayers to the son of Sachi. Nijatvai Gaudiyam Jagati Parigridya Prabhurimam 
हरे कृष्णे तेवं गणन विदिना कीर्तयत भो इथी प्रयम शिक्षम चरण मरुपेत्या परिदिशम सची सुनो किमे नयन शरणिम यस्य तिपदम Sila Raghunath Das Goswami is praying. Nayana Sharnam Yashati Padam. When will the son of Sachi, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, again come onto the pathway of my eyes? In other words, Sila Raghunath Das Goswami is in Brandavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has left this world. Raghunath Das Swami used to live with Mahaprabhu in Puri. But Mahaprabhu left. Afterwards, Raghunath Das Swami came under the shelter of Rupa and Sanatan in Vrindavan. And now he is remembering Mahaprabhu and feeling separation. He is saying that Mahaprabhu he gave shiksha. Iti prayam shiksham. To his associates from Godadesh. The Bengal, area of Bengal. Those who had come from Navadip, Dham and Godam and all the surrounding area. Mapu gave shiksha teachings to them. They were charna madupebya. They're like bumblebees. Under, at the, at his lotus feet. Just as the bumblebee is attracted to the fragrance of the lotus flower and relishes nectar there, so all the Navadweep associates of Mahaprabhu, they're like bumblebees, just intoxicated and always attracted and absorbed in the beautiful lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That means the service of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he gave them instructions. What? Hari Krishna evam ganana vidina kirtayat bho. That means he, he taught them to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Ganana Vidina means with no rules but one rule. <laughs> the one rule is Ganan, count, keep count of how much you're chanting every day. Especially Mahapu said, chant Nirbanda, one lakh, Harina. And in the first line, Nijatwe Godian Jagati. Jagati means in the whole world, in the whole universe. Parigriya Prabhuriman. Mahaprabhu, Parigriya, he accepted as his family. Nijatwe, his, as his own Godian, the Vaishnavas of Godadesh. This is translation of the verse. Now what does it mean? Ni Jatwe Gaudiyan Jagati Chaitanya Mahapu has accepted as his own the Vaishnavas of Gaudadesh. What does that mean? Is it that the Bengali Vaishnavas of Navadweep and Srikanda and Kulina Panihati and all those places around Navadweep, are they the chosen ones? Mm -hmm. That the God only accepts these to be His own chosen people and not others. <laughs> this is not what Srila Raghunath Swandi wants to e express. He wants to teach us something. Mahaprabhu is universal. Hmm? He is God of everyone. Every living entity is His servant. Either they know it or they don't know it. Some know, some don't know, but everyone is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu servant. The meaning here is that the residents of Navadvipta see Mahaprabhu as their own. He's born in our village. He studied here in our village and after his initiation he became a Vaishnava. 
He is the son of Sachi and Jagannath Mishra. They feel a family relation with him. And because in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has said, I reciprocate with everyone. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu feels family relationship towards those Gaudiyas. Now, what is the Swarup of love? Srila Sanatana Goswami Pali in Brahma Bhagavatam Rita, he said, Atyanta Pragaira Mamata Yukta Lokik Sadbandu Bhat Sambandha Atyanta Prakara means excessively condensed. Mamata, possessiveness. You know how people have possessiveness for their country. Viva la France! Tears come in their eyes when they think of the glory of France. Possessiveness. Everyone is nowadays things have become more globalistic but still people they are very proud of their place huh? so this is called Mamata mine my Navadvip Dham my Sachinandan Gohari possessive Asdyanta Pratkam Mamata Yukt that Yukt means uh, imbued with uh, and Lokik Sadbandu Bhat Sambandha Lokik means of this world. Because, you know, this world is temporary. And this world is full of uncertainty. We are full of vulnerabilities. So any situation is precious because the next moment it may be gone. I know I was so happy always with my Gurudev. And I never thought that one day he will not be manifest in this world anymore. So, then you start to realize how Vaishnava association is very precious. When you lose it, then you appreciate it more. So, in this world, everyone is vulnerable, everything is uncertain. So, our relationships uh, for the persons who have bodily identification, they are very, very precious. There's so much attachment, worry, concern, feeling that you want the best for that person. Uh, that is called the Lokik Sadbandu Sambandha. The relationship between ordinary people of this world, it's, it's strong, it's like a knot in the heart. So, Lokik Sambandhu but but means like. So, one should have a relationship like that, which is imbued with extremely condensed mamata, possessiveness. That relationship to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Like the residents of Navadvipa. And then, because yaya tamam prapadyante tangstataiva bajamyam because the Supreme Lord reciprocates, if you approach Him like this, He'll feel like this to you. So this is the teaching here. Ne jatvai gaudyan jagati paragridya praburimam Hare Krishna tevam ganana vidina kirtayatabo Raghunath Daska Swami is saying that because Nimai Pandit Sachinandan Gohari because he loves them as his own family member so he wants what's best for them and he gives them the very best thing so it's described in uh, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat how every morning the devotees of Navadvi would wake up and think I've got to go and see Nimai <laughs> and bring him something so one person would arrive there at Sachimata's house, they've made a garland with a garland for him. Someone else will come with some fresh ghee. Someone else, they've, they've made some yogurt the previous night and they bring a fresh yogurt. Like this. Everyone's just waking up in the morning and then going to Nimai Pandit's house and bringing gifts. 
They can't wait to see him. Like family man. Right? So in Mahaprabhu he saw all of his very close Navadip Basis. And he said, Prabhu Kohi Kohi Lama Ei Maha Mantra Hiya Japa Giyya Sabi Koriya Nirbanda Hiya Hoitei Sarva Siddhi Hoi Be Sabha Savakshana Bo Iti Vidhi Nehi Aar Ki Bo Jani Ki Shani Ki Ba Jaganane Aha Nisha Chinta Krishna Balava Badane Yadi Yama Patisneya Taki Sabaka Krishna Nama Vyati Rik Nagai Bayar He said now I am telling you this mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Prabhu Kohi Koilam, E Mahat, Hiya Japa Giyya Sabe Koya Nya Bandha. Mahapu said, I want you to chant this mantra every day, Nira Bandha. One round is called Amala. Four malas is called a Granti. And 16 grantis is called a nirabandha. 64 rounds, 100,000 names, 1 lakh. I want you to chant nirabandha fixed every day. This is what Raghunath Das Goswami is describing. Hare Krishna, Tevam, Ganana, Vidina, Kirtai. To his own very close associates, he's like a father. When a father instructs his son, it's with so much love because he wants the best. Hmm? So Janu Lambita Bujoka Nakava Tato Sankirta Naika Bitaro Gornitai, they are the fathers of the Sankirtan movement. So just as a father instructs his son with so much love, wanting the best for his future, Mahaprabhu is telling those associates of Navadvip. And I am telling you also, follow what I am saying. Because I want that your future will be so wonderful. Follow this. And your future will be, you cannot even imagine. So, Nirbanda. Every day, try to chant. One lakh harina. Iya hoitei sarava siddhi hoitei sabha. By doing this, you will get all perfection. There is no rule. Relate, you can chant any time. You can chant when you're walking, when you're sitting, when you're lying in your bed. My goddess said you can chant when you're fighting with your wife, Hare Krishna. <laughs> any time you can chant. <laughs> There's no rule or regulation. All the time you can chant. So, Mahapuru said, Kibo Jani, when you are eating, you can chant. Sainam Rita Pao, Radha Krishna Kuriga. Now we are taking this prasadam and singing the glories of Radha Krishna. You can chant when you are resting, Kishayani, Kibo Jagarani, when you are awake. And all the time, think of Krishna in your mind. Ahanisha, day and night. Ahanisha, chinta Krishna, balahavadani. Day and night, think of Krishna and let your mouth always be filled with the syllables. Hare Krishna. Jadiyama, Patisneya, Takisabaka. Mahaprabhu said, if you love me, if you have any affection for me, then what should you do? Krishna Nama Vyatarik Nama, just chant the name of Krishna, don't speak anything else. So Mahapu gave such instructions with great love to his associates of Navadvip. When Mahaprabhu was in Puri, then all were in such separation. But they used to travel every year. We were just discussing. Uh, because it was the Salil Vihar day, uh, the day after Nishinga Day's appearance day, when the Navadip Basis one year, they were coming from Bengal to Puri. And Mahaprabhu, sitting in the Gambiri, he's already thinking, oh, my Advaita Chari is coming. <laughs> he's probably hungry. I should send Mahaprasad. 
and Mahapu got servants to send Jagannath Mahaprasad all the way to Katak. I don't know if you know, you have Jagannath Puri is here, and then about 60 kilometers to Bhubaneswara, and then even further north than that is Katak. So Mahapu is already thinking about, I have to send Mahaprasadam to Advaita Chaya. <laughs> and others are coming with him. Murari Gupta, Srivas Thakur, Narahari, Raghav Pandit. And so Mahapu is thinking about his devotees. And then when uh, the devotees are uh, approaching Jagannath Puri, then uh, Mahaprabhu set off from the, uh, the Gambira with many associates doing Kirtan and they met on Ataranala, you know the bridge with 18 arches, just about 3 kilometers outside of Puri. And from far away when Mahaprabhu and his associates saw the Advaita Chari and all the residents of Nadia, all on both sides, everyone gave Dandavat Pranam again and again. No one knew who was giving Pranam to whom. And just again and again they were giving for now. And then they stood up and they ran towards each other and Mahapu embraced Advaita Chari. And they're all embracing each other and weeping. And just then, Lord Jagannath, he was thinking, I have no arms and legs so I couldn't go. <laughs> but I'll go in the form of my Mahaprasad Mala. So Mahapu inspired Apanipado in the, in, the, in the Vedas. He said, the Supreme Lord has no arms and legs. So that is actually the description of Lord Jagannath. So, Lord Jagannath, of course, he can go anywhere, but he's doing his Leela as Daru Brahma, wooden Brahma. So he was sitting there, but he also wanted to be there in that ocean of love. So he inspired his Pujari, and just as they were all meeting, the Pujaris arrived from the Jagannath temple with so many garlands of Lord Jagannath and chanda and sandalwood paste. And Mahapu personally put the garlands on each devotee and decorated them with sandalwood paste. He's, Mahapu is worshipping his own devotees. And then Advaita Charya and Mahapu, they began dancing like wild young lions. And they danced all the way from Atranala to Narendra Sarovar, where the boat festival was just beginning. It took four hours. So how much love is there between Mahaprabhu and the Navabhidhi Basis, he grew up there amongst them. They have Mamata for him and he has Mamata for them. They used to stay for the Chaturmasya and at the end of Chaturmasya, then it was time for them to leave. I was remembering actually today when I was walking along the country road here through the mud <laughs> in the heavy rain. I was remembering once at Vaitacharya he was staying it's called Ahulamat, Ahulyamat in Puri. That's where Advaitacharya used to stay every year. And he used to invite Mahaprabhu and there were nine sannyasis in Puri so Mahaprabhu used to come with nine sannyasis to every day to accept invitations in different people's homes. So Advaitacharya invited Mahaprabhu and his nine sannyasi associates Parmananda Puri, Brahmananda Bharati, and so on. But Advaita Chari had this feeling in his heart. I just want to, I'd like to serve just Mahaprabhu by himself. Because when you serve many people, you can't give attention to all of them. So it's better not to serve many, many Vaishnavas. Serve one Vaishnava nicely and you can invite the other one the next day. You'd serve them with full attention. <laughs> so Advaita Charya was thinking, I want to serve Mahaprabhu with full attention. So then that day there was heavy rain. <laughs> and all the other sannyas oh, it's raining so heavily I'll, I'll stay. I will not I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and Advaita Charya was looking at the rain and wondering, will anyone come? But only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. <laughs> Soaking wet in the rain. Huh? So when I was walking here in the rain today, I was remembering how Mahaprabhu was in the rain, <laughs> going to see Advaita Acharya. <laughs> and when he arrived there, then Advaita Acharya, he said, Oh, thank you, Indra. <laughs> you fulfilled my desire. 
Marpus, if you want to speak of Indra fulfilling your desire, all the devotees are your servants. So, Nijatwe Gaudiyan Jagati Parigridya Prabhupada, Mahaprabhu has such love for Advaita Charya and all the devotees of Gaudadesh, Nabudipta. When the four months Chattomasri come to an end, then it's time for them to leave. So it's very difficult to say goodbye to Vaishnavas. Do you know how to say goodbye to Vaishnava? It's impossible. You have to just close your eyes and run. <laughs> so, Advaita Charya and all the devotees, Nityananda Prabhu, Narahari, Murari Gupta, they all came to see Mahaprabhu to give their last respects to him and take his permission to go back to Navadvip. Mahapu said, I know how much difficulty, how much hardship you have to undergo to come here every year. Walking from Navadi to Puri, it's a long way. They would walk for a month, camping along the way. With their wives and children also. Children also. So Mahapu said, I know how much difficulty you undergo to come here. And now it's time to go, but I cannot forbid you from coming again next year. I should. I should forbid, I should tell you don't, don't come back because it's so difficult for you to come. He said, but I cannot. Because I am very attached to the joy of your association. <laughs> so even though I should tell you, no, don't do this. But I cannot. Mahapu said, I cannot repay you. Because I am a sannyasi and I don't have anything. <laughs> the only thing I have is this body. So that's all I have and I am giving it to you. You can sell me in any marketplace you like. You can sell me anywhere. I am yours. <laughs> when Mahaprabhu said this, All the devotees were crying. The ground beneath their feet became so muddy from their tears that they would slip here and there. They said, look what you've done, we can't go now, it's too slippy. <laughs> and they just, they could not go. The bondage of praying. Ama Prame Bhakti Bandi Ache Ridi Abhitari Jaya Nettapari Dekai Amare Krishna said my devotees, wherever they look, their eyes fall, they see me. And they have bound me with a rope of their love. The devotees could not leave. And they stayed for about another seven days. They could not go. Finally, they came back to Mahaprabhu and said, How can we leave you? When you speak so sweetly. And you are so affectionate to us. But Babu said, Now you have to return. And Mapu himself, he went in the Gambira and sat down and his heart was breaking. And then they went back to Venom. So this is the meaning here. Raghunath Das Goswami was there in Puri and he saw this tug of war between the heart of Mahaprabhu and the devotees who come from Navadvip, how they're pulling each other and they cannot separate. Raghunath Das Goswami saw it. He was there, he was a young man. Now he's old and he's remembering this and writing. Jagati Hare Krishna Tevam Ganana Bindana Kirtayatabo. 
iti prayam siksyam charnam madupebya paridisan sa chisuno kim may nainasya niyam ya sa tipadam. So, here, by quoting this verse, Srila Bhakti Nautako is giving us the key how to enter into bhajan. <coughs> Give up all identification with the body and mind, all relation with this world. Your relationship is with Sachinanda and Gohari. Remember, those associates of Navadvip, how they are attached to him and he is also attached to them. And by bowing down to those associates again and again, some drop of their mood can come to us if we are in their anugantya, following them under their guidance. Iti prayam shiksham and accept Mahaprabhu as he was the shiksha guru. You should accept Mahaprabhu as your bhajan shiksha guru. What he is teaching by his words like Rup Shiksha, Sanatan Shiksha, his conversation with Ramananda Rai and especially Shikshastakam. Take it that Mahaprabhu is giving you this with love. Hare Krishna Thevam Ganana Vedana Kirtayatabo. Here Ganana means counting. Count Hare Krishna. So that is referring to Japa. Kirtayata. Kirtayata means chanting. There are many persons today, even big, big pandits and scholars in our Gaudiya line, they're telling, oh, the best Japa is in the mind. Wrong. This is not Mahaprabhu's teaching. Mahaprabhu is saying here, Ganana Vidana Kirtayata. Your Japa is. You should chant, actually chant, not only chanting in the mind. Lips and tongue should be moving and some sound, at least little sound. You can chant very loudly also, it's good. Very good if you're more merciful to people who are far away. Mm -hmm. But at least some sound should come and then it will be kirtan. Otherwise, it's only smaranam and that was not Mahapu's teaching. And in the end, here, Raghunath Das Goswami is saying, When will that Sachi Sunu, the son of Sachi, come before my eyes? That means bhajan should be done with a feeling of separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he's called Sachi Sunu because the, very often the son takes after the mother. And the daughter takes after the father. So, Mahaprabhu very much takes after his mother, Sachi. How soft is the heart of Sachi Mata? How tolerant, considerate. She became pregnant and then she had, she had a child and her first child died. Another, another. She had eight children, they all passed away. How painful is that? We cannot imagine. And then she had a child who lived Vishwarup. So if you have lost eight children, then you will be very attached if one is alive. But what happened? That Vishwarup, when he was young, took sannyas. <laughs> then she has one left. And her husband. Her husband also passed away. And then her last child, only person in the world she has. And he also took sannyas. So in her life she had what material happiness? From the material, you want material happiness in your life? Sometimes you complain, oh, I wish I had this or that. Huh? But she had only heartbreak, everything, losing everything in her life. But she never became bitter. She never complained to God. She always thought, oh, Krishna is very kind to me. She always served her deities. Always chanted the holy name. So try to be like Sachi. 
tolerating all difficulties and not seeing even the difficulties, only everything is Krishna's mercy. She's so merciful. When baby Krishna broke one yogurt pot, Madhya Yashoda tied him up with a rope. When little Nima, he took a stick, he smashed every pot in the kitchen. Everything, he destroyed the whole kitchen. And Sachimata did not even rebuke him or chastise him in any way. So she is Yashoda, but Yashoda in the form of Sachi is even more merciful. So the qualities of the mother, they come in the son. So those qualities of Tanarupi Sunitsena, Torupi Sesana, Manina, Maradena, Kirtanya Sadahari, being more humble than a blade of grass, tolerating everything, being more tolerant than a tree, respecting everyone. She was so respectful, even her son would give her instructions. Oh mother, chant this Mahamantra and follow Kadasi very strictly. Yes, yes, uncle. She's so humble, she's taking instruction from her own son. Oh, Mahaprabhu in the Mahaprakash, he said, I will never give Krishna Prem to Sachi, to my mother, because she made offense to Advaita Acharya. At once she wants to come and touch the feet of Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya? No, oh, how is it possible? And he began to glorify. Oh, Sachi is so, so glorious. She is Yashoda. She is Kaushalya. She is Devaki. She is Prishni. She is the Aditi. She is the universal mother of all incarnations. And he became in so much ecstasy, glorifying Sachi Mata, he fainted. Then when he fainted, Sachi Mata could come and take his food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, that Sachi Mata who is so kind, so tolerant, so merciful and loving, oh, all those, she has raised this Nimai to be like that. So Sachi Sunu, uh, when will that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come before the path of my eyes? Who loves his devotees and gives them the best thing, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So in these two verses, Srila Bhakti Thakur has given his uh, Mangala Charna, introduction, auspicious invocation of Bhajan Rahasya. Now Bhajan Rahasya will begin, we will continue in the evening class. Please come at 4 o'clock. Sachinandan Gohari Ki Jai! Saptunga Swami Sachinanda Srila Bhakti Thakur Ki Jai! Ribbuna Mangal Karishri Harinam Sankirtana Ki Jai! Gaur Premanande Hari Jai!